Well, hello everybody and welcome back to another awesome mental health check. Your struggle is part of your story, so celebrate every victory. And we will be sort of even touching on that today in our brand new series that we're we're teaching on called The Mind, Mental and Emotional Health. So remembering, of course, those of you that uh, are not Christians or have not given your heart to the Lord yet, this is mostly going to be talking about like how Christians, like that's what we do on this channel, how Christians get through mental health issues. That's why we're trying desperately to break the stigma of mental health. There are so many people out there that struggle with mental health. Okay, so we're trying to break that stigma. But now imagine on top of that, those of you that do struggle with mental health and understand that, imagine the extra stigma that happens if you're a Christian, because I'm going to be honest with you guys, there's a lot of Christians out there that are like, oh, you shouldn't be struggling with that, or you shouldn't be taking medicine to help you with that, etc, etc, etc. Which you know as well as I do that until we have come to that full point where we can absolutely just hand over everything and all of those things, there are a lot of people that still struggle struggle with it. So there's a stigma on it as is, as it is. But then in the Christian side of things, there's a stigma as well. So if you're a Christian with mental health, you have double the stigma that you're trying to deal with as well. So that's why we're doing, you know, Christian teachings on how to combat a lot of the things that you suffer with, um, with mental health. So this specific teaching is only three weeks. It's only going to be a three week teaching, but it's really, really interesting. Like I said, if the um, teaching is called the mind, mental and emotional health. So we're going to go through things on how to deal with with uh, mental and emotional health with regards to being a Christian and how each writer has written about this or the specific writer of this teaching, how they made it through things. So that's why we're kind of doing it like that. And I personally have no issues with the thoughts of doing that. And yes, I am a pastor. And yes, there are a lot of pastors, and I will admit that, that don't believe in mental health issues and stuff like that. And I totally understand that is their total thought process. That's okay. Everybody is has a right to their their own feelings and stuff like that. We personally, over here at Living Waters, believe that you know what, if you are struggling with mental health, isn't it better that we help you through with things that God can show you to help you through things rather than just sweep it under the carpet or pretend like it's not there because you know as well as I do, it's there and it's difficult, right? So we're going to go through those things. So today's specific teaching is called My Journey Through. So again, like I always do, what I'm going to do is after I've prayed, I'm going to give you the scriptures that go along with this. Now, this specific one actually uh, cites out the scripture as we go and then shows how it's been used and whatnot. So get ready for that rather than having to um, pull up the scriptures, so to speak, for yourself ahead of time, like I usually say to you. But anyways, okay, so now before I pray, we would love to have you so subscribe to our channel. We would love that. Like our video and comment if you want to. One thing for sure that we always ask about is if you are from another country and now I know that we have some people from other countries, if you're from another country, what is your emergency number? Ours here in North America is 911, but I've heard other places are 811 and stuff like that. So let us know in the comments so that we can add that to our list of phone numbers and we will say what country or what 
continent, whatever it is that you want to say, then we can, you know, help others that are there as well on how to deal with things. If you have other numbers that uh, you want listed, let us know because we will put that into the description box as well because we love you guys and we want to make a point of having everything ready for you as you need it, okay? All right. So again, I know you guys can see that Mandy is not with me still. Um, <clears throat> at this point in time, she is just getting used to married life right now. So we're just giving her time to, you know, keep things going basically for her. Now, you guys that have been struggling with mental health, as have I, you understand what that's like. And sometimes if we're dealing with mental health issues, we have to only do one thing at a time. And it's not necessarily that you're looking to get proficient in it or get really good at it. It's just learn to deal with that first. And so for her right now, we are just totally giving her the space to do those things as she needs to. And that's what we should be doing. And unfortunately, that is not always the case in, uh, especially with mental health issues. People have an expectation that you need to get everything done when it's required, et cetera, et cetera. But sometimes with mental health, it's a little bit more difficult to do those things. So we're just trying to give grace where we can give grace. All right. So let me just pray and then I'll give you the scriptures and we'll just start right off on this. So Lord, I just want to say thank you so much for everybody that is joining with us today. And I just pray that you would just pour yourself out over each person in Jesus name. Amen. All right, guys. So again, like I said, this specific teaching today is called My Journey Through. And it will be talking um, on basically the part of the person that wrote this teaching about the mind and mental and the emotional health. All right. So the scriptures that we will be dealing with today are Proverbs 23, 7 and Philippians 4, 8. So like I said, they actually, the, the writer of this uh, specific teaching does touch on these scriptures and, and I will be reading them out and stuff like that. And, and they talk about how the, that specific scripture collates with what we're teaching today, that type of thing. All right, so my journey through. And the writer writes, we all have different journeys we take in life through bad times and good. But one thing is sure, if the Lord Jesus Christ is with us through the journey, we will make it through. And that, my friends, is an absolute truth. If Jesus Christ is with us, we can make it through. Now, I'm going to be touching on some things, but let me tell you, I'll tell you that as a little girl, I grew up with uh, mental health issues that I didn't even know about because there really wasn't a lot of teaching with regards to that. And I wouldn't necessarily say that there was a stigma on it, but nobody really understood a lot of that stuff. So for me... I, I, you know, I didn't give my heart to the Lord till later on uh, in, I, I'm not even sure exactly. I think I was like seven or eight years old when I gave my heart to the Lord, maybe even 10. And um, I didn't have anybody to help me to show me the way or any of those things. So I really struggled a lot. So yes, I had Jesus in my life. And so that really did help me through a lot of the things because I was diagnosed with dyslexia and et cetera. Like, I mean, there's always something, right? But, you know, having Jesus helped me to actually make it through where I needed to make it through. And then when I rededicated my life to Jesus later on in life, I could really see how he had walked through with me. You know, the old footsteps um, poem where it talks about, you know, 
footsteps in the sand and stuff like that and how Jesus actually picked up the person and carried them through. That's why you only see one set of footprints because Jesus was actually carrying that person. That's what I really feel has happened in my life so much. So for those of you that don't know who Jesus is or have him as your Lord and Savior, at the end of this teaching, I am going to just share with you how to have him as your Lord and Savior because I think that it's important for everybody to have that. Again, if you're not interested, don't bother. Don't worry about it right now. That's it. I want you guys to understand how Jesus helps you first. So if you're not ready for that, that's okay. That's okay because, you know, it'll always be there. And I'm going to try to do it every single um, teaching to, to help you guys through as you need it. So those are things that you can look forward to. Anyway, all right. So let's carry on with this, uh, this teaching. Um, it says here, I want to share with you my journey through depression. Okay, now this is the writer of this specific teaching, my journey through. And uh, they're going to share with us how they made it through depression, which I'm pretty excited about because I remember as a young person struggling with, with that. Um, I think that I probably struggled with anxiety more than anything. I was so anxious. I was just such an anxious child. And... Um, they didn't really have a name for it at the time and and well they did but yeah you had to actually be able to get to somebody that would be able to diagnose you etc cetera, etc cetera. Well, and it was a very difficult time for me as a young person because we were also very poor and so going to the doctor you had to be like dying to go to the doctor then that's just the way that it was because, you know, there were seven kids in my family and my parents were exhausted. And, and I mean, I assume that they probably struggled with mental health issues as well, because that's just the way that it is, right? All right, so let's just carry on here. For many years, I suffered with what is known today as clinical depression. Throughout this, I struggled to understand what was going on and with this, ha or sorry, why this had happened to me. When I analyzed each of my steps, cause and effect throughout this journey, what the Lord highlighted for me was the area of my thought life. I had much to learn about the power of thoughts and how thoughts can transform your life. Like it says in the foundational Bible verse for this series, Proverbs 23, 7, it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I just want to quickly touch on that a little bit because it is an absolute truth, okay? As a man thinketh in his heart, or as you think, or what what you think about inside is what you become, that type of thing. So an interesting concept with regards to that is if you say, for instance, and this is just an, uh, a couple of things that I'm going to say. So first off, in the morning, you wake up and you, you kind of have that quick thought that's like, Meh, I don't feel like it today. I don't feel very good. I just don't feel like doing what I have to do. Like say you have to go to work or something. Well, if you just keep thinking on that, that you feel sick, then eventually you're going to actually feel sick and not be able to go to work. Do you see how that kind of stuff works? And it is an actual physical illness that you end up with because your thought life has made it that way. So it has made you think of all of those things, right? So another thing, let's say that you have an addiction issue in your life. And so one of the things is, is you are trying really desperately not to, I don't know, let's say, uh, look at pornography or something like that. So you're trying really desperately not to do that, but it keeps, the thoughts keep coming into your head 
first off, it's a thought of, ooh, I'd like to watch that. And then you're like, no, I don't want to watch that. I don't want to be part of that. So you're trying really hard. But then it's like, well, what's going to hurt? It's only a few minutes. It's just just quickly, it'll make you feel better, etc, etc. And so what ends up happening is your thoughts have propelled you into doing what you feel or you know, you don't want to do. So that is something like those are just two small examples. But those are the things of how powerful our thought life can be in our lives, right? All right, so let's carry on. The Bible makes this concept of the power of our thoughts plain and simple. As a person thinks on the inside, this is who they will become on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's true. Uh, another example I was just thinking about is, have you ever met somebody that looks like they just swallowed a lemon because they are just like a sourpuss on their face? They're just grouchy all the time. Well, what I have read about that, the statistics that I have read about that, is that somebody that is like that is just bitter inside and they think bitter thoughts and they feel bitter and they feel angry and all of those things until it just becomes part of who they are. They are bitter. They are angry. They are all of those things because their thought pattern has brought them there. So, that to me is like, whoa, hold on a minute. I don't want to be there. And I'm sure that most of you don't want to be there too. So think on something else, something that is good. And we're going to talk about that in a second. So this says, uh, it continues on. It says, our character becomes the complete sum of all our thoughts. Woo. Truth, truth right there. As the plant springs from, uh, springs from and could not exist without the seed, so every act of a person springs from the hidden seeds of thought. <sighs> Seriously, this is big time. A thought is a seed. This seed grows not only into an action, but also into an emotion. In fact, if you are in emotional turmoil, this can be a great thermometer to indicate that your predominant way of thinking is off-center and that negative harmful thoughts are influencing your life. Wow. Wow. That's all I can say about that is, wow, our negative, like, well, let me just say it, crappy thoughts influencing your life. So are you living a life of negativity, negativity and brokenness and all of those things because your thoughts are on those types of things? That's an interesting concept. This consider or this continues on and says the soul attracts those desires which is secretly harbors sorry which it secretly harbors those things which it loves and that which it fears we do not attract the life that we want but rather that which we are wow so the soul attracts that which is secretly harbors. So if you say, uh, uh, this just came to me just now, say that you are somebody that, okay, as a woman, I'm trying to think of how to explain this in, in, a, in, an, in a way that everybody can understand, but is not going to be offensive. Now I'm going to have to say, as a woman, a cis woman, let's say, you go in and uh, you're doing something and uh, a cis man or somebody like that starts cat calling you or saying some rude things or whatever to you, the, then you think to yourself, why is he doing that? Why does he have to talk to me like that? Well, because he already has been thinking negative or dirty thoughts. And so he can't help it. It comes out just like it secretly harbor so the soul attracts what that which it secretly harbors so if you're secretly harboring a dirty mind it's going to be looking how it can 
find that or or display that type of thing right so i mean that's a small example but it is an example of something that you have the choice to control you do not have to live like that because and then i'm going to get into this a little bit more about philippians uh 4 8 it's we're going to talk about that in two seconds here so let's just get into that we think that our thoughts can be kept in the secret cave of our mind, but they cannot. We uh, affect, sorry, we believe these are just thoughts. How can they affect my life, right? We all have that in our inside of ourselves. It's like, it's just a thought. I didn't mean it by anything, but... So listen to this. The thoughts of our lives become the habitual patterns of our lives. I encourage you to decide today to do as Paul encourages in Philippians 4, 8 when he tells the Philippians to, and this is the, the crux of this whole thing. What do you do when your thoughts are, you have bad thoughts or you have thoughts that are Basically, like I said, the soul attracts that which it secretly harbors. So you you have thoughts that are secret that you would never say out loud. And then all of a sudden you start displaying that type of thing, right? So how do you change that? Well, in Philippians 4, 8, it says, Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. To me, that is huge. So those are the types of things that we can do. So if a thought is contrary to what you want, like for instance, you want to think on good things and lovely things, but you get a contrary thought to that, that's where the scripture that we've been talking about in 2 Corinthians, where it says, take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. So you now you take that contrary thought and make it obedient to Christ. So you think on the good things, the lovely things, like I am worth all the things that God has for me. Jesus loves me. I am strong and courageous. Like, I know you can't really see that scripture very well, but like there's things like that that you can think on. So what you can do is, you know, find one thing in the Bible. Like, for instance, I am loved and think on that. So every time you get a contrary thought until you get to know more of the Bible, think on that. I am loved. I am loved. I am loved. I have had times where I have just, you know, basically kind of like my own little mantra. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to think of words that you guys would understand. I don't want to just Christianize everybody out of here because you may not even understand that. You may not know that. So it would be like a mantra that where I'm like, I believe in you, Lord, and I believe in your promises. And I will just keep repeating that under my breath or in my mind or in my heart until those contrary thoughts no longer have room to germinate in there. Like it says about it being a seed of thought, right? It has no room to germinate because what is inside my mind is... I believe in you, Lord, and I believe in your promises. I believe that you have great things for me. Those are the types of things that I try to think on. Am I perfect? I would say absolutely not because I make mistakes too. And there are days where I, unfortunately, I let myself get into things sometimes. And then all of a sudden, and when I say get into things, I mean, you know, depressive thoughts kind of thing or anxious thoughts. And then I just remember the, the scripture that says, calm my anxious thoughts, calm my anxious mind. Like that's Gigi's paraphrase, but you get what I'm saying, right? All right. So first off, we're all finished this specific teaching. So what I want to do is uh, I want to tell you guys, if you are interested in having Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you literally have to do is ask him. You just basically say, Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins and make me brand new 
in your name. Amen. And that is the basic of all of it. Next week, I'm going to give you a little bit more about that. And then so by our third and final week, I will give you an actual prayer that you can pray to receive Jesus if that doesn't work because it totally works by just saying Jesus I love you and I ask you to come into my heart and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins and make me whole in Jesus name that's all you need that is literally all you need all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray to be finished this specific teaching today but I just want to remind you guys again, subscribe. We would love to have you like this, comment, do all those things. And if you are interested in the description box below, we have a number of different phone numbers that you could contact for help. Okay. So because we're in Calgary, Alberta, there are going to be some Calgary phone numbers, but there are also like North America numbers, like the National Suicide Prevention Hotline is on there. Uh, North America's uh, emergency number of 911. That's all in there and ways to get a hold of us through the mental health check if you want to, that type of thing as well. Okay, so we're trying to give you guys as much as we can so that you're never alone. You're never sitting there saying, oh man, I, I don't know how to get out of this. We always have something for you. All right. Okay, so let's pray and we'll just be done for today. And thank you so much for joining with us. We sure love you guys. All right. So Lord God, I just thank you for every single person that has watched this video with us today. I pray that you would help them to decide today to live free from negative and harmful thoughts and to replace those thoughts with God's thoughts instead. We just thank you for that. We just worship you, Lord God. And I just pray your blessing over each and every single person in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, I love you so much. And I just pray God's hand would just be upon you in every step this week. In Jesus name. Bye for now.